Well, it's 1st of July and I'm standing in an unplanted food plot. And, and you know what? It's going to remain unplanted until August. And the great part about this area is all the does and fawns and bucks are feeding out on the neighbor's A fields, bean field, and corn out in the ag, the manicured ag fields all summer long. We can't compete with that quality or volume of forage out there. And we don't have to. Um, I do not want those does and fawns hanging out here. Now, we could plant some soybeans here and some clover and we can get a high volume of top quality summer forage in here, but then we're going to have an army of does and fawns that are just sitting here establishing their daily patterns and they're going to consume that probably down to the dirt because we only have about an acre and a quarter and we're going to fill our property with does and fawns. So when that food, when we plant it in August, we have an army of does and fawns just waiting for that food to pop, waiting for that little bit of green to come in. And, uh, and we're not going to get the volume that we need. And for that, those does and fawns take up a lot of space. And does and fawns, when they take up space, they push bucks away from that space. And so those bucks aren't intermingling and in, embedding in within those does and fawns. Um, they're going to probably be off in the neighbors. We only have 45 acres to work with. So we need to maximize our space. We need to maximize our food plot space. So by not planting this in the, in the summertime, uh, we're actually potentially helping the deer. They're over on the neighbors. They're getting high quality forage. We couldn't have competed with that level of nutrition. At the same time, we're making sure that we leave our food plots fairly deer free when they're first planted in August. We can get a good four to six weeks before the beans turn brown, the last cutting of hay, and we'll get a good volume established before the deer come in here. At the same time, we have some local bucks that are taking up residence here and off to the side of those ag fields during the summer months. We're already getting some good buck pictures, and, uh, and I believe that'll allow us to take a smaller deer herd into the fall It'll slowly increase as the surrounding area gets hunter pressured, food sources are dwindling. And so we'll actually be able to have a center of deer that are focusing on here during October and November, potentially target the bucks that we'd like to in the neighborhood, but at the same time be able to control the population if we need to in November and December, and at the same time protect those young bucks that we'd like to see grow another year or two. So by not planting this during the summer, it actually offers us some great benefits and some benefits to the local deer herd. So consider that. We're not piling these does and fawns on here during the summertime. And if you're having trouble with uh, shooting those bucks you'd like, consider how much food you're planting during the summer and how that might impact how many deer are staying there during the fall. But what do summer does and fawns do when they're fawning in a certain area? They stay. And if they're staying, you might end up seeing a lot more does and fawns than bucks. So sometimes just leave that food plot alone in the summertime and you and your deer herd will be better off for it.